So a little bit more about, I'm going to speak specific to Canyonlands National Park because by far of the four units I work for, um, it has the largest amount of uh, backcountry and, and wilderness areas. So um, a little bit more, I want to talk a little bit more about Canyonlands National Park uh, specifically. So the area in Southeast Utah where the Canyonland sits is a high desert ecosystem. Um, and it, because of the nature of what a high desert ecosystem involves, it's, it can be very sensitive to the impacts from visitation. Um, the park itself, so you can see here, uh, the kind of pink colored shaded area represents the 337,500 acres of, of the park. And then there's a small unit out here um, that's part of the park that uh, is Horseshoe Canyon. So 86% uh, of this area is managed as wilderness. Uh, so everything outside of 300 feet of center line of major roads and 150 feet of uh, four wheel drive dirt backcountry roads um, is managed as wilderness within the park. Uh, there are numerous designated trails for the park uh, within the park uh, in the four different districts that make it up. So here up in the north, you have the Island in the Sky District. Uh, down here in the south uh, east is the Needles District. Over here is the far remote Mays District over in the west. Um, and then through the heart of the park itself is the Colorado River and the Green River, which come together and then flow through Cataract Canyon uh, down into Lake Powell, which is way down in the um, far southwest of this map here um, off the screen. So people come to Canyonlands or visitors come here uh, for a lot of different reasons, but one of the main reasons is for the immense and incredible opportunities for hiking in the backcountry, um, hiking and backpacking. Uh, so we see a lot of hikers, a lot of backpackers. Um, we do get quite a few four-wheel drivers that utilize the um, pretty unique rugged four-wheel drive roads that run through the park. Um, and then we see some climbers, canyoneers, um, but by far um, the vast majority of the people going into our backcountry um, are looking to hike or combine hiking with the other activities that they're doing. Um, a big component of Canyonlands is the cultural resources. So the park itself has a, a very in, <clears throat> high density of archeological resources. Um, within the park, this area down here that you see in the red box runs through uh, the Salt Creek Canyon that runs up to the north, through, north through the Needles District and then hits the Colorado River. Um, this canyon itself, that Salt Creek Canyon, is, a, <clears throat> is recognized as a salt archaeological district on the National Register of Historic Places. So it's very dense with archaeological resources, which, again, are, are up to 10,000 years old um, and very sensitive to visitor impacts. Um, and we do a lot to make sure that we monitor and protect that area. Um, I mentioned earlier this area up here, the Horseshoe Canyon um, divided unit of the park because it, it, for the most part, is a part of the park because of the archaeological resources it has in it. Um, perhaps some of you have heard of the Great Gallery, which is um, a very significant uh, rock art um, feature. Um, in the park that's also on the uh, National Register of Historic Places. In general, uh, in, or over, in average, we issue about 10,000 backcountry permits per year uh, for backpacking, four-wheel driving, uh, running of the rivers, floating the rivers, um, climbing, that sort of thing. And with those 10,000 permits, we see close to 20,000 people um, associated with those permits, spending the night out there and, and doing various activities. That's over the, that's in general average over a year, but in general, all of our visitations really concentrated within the prime months of the year for, for being out there. So March, April, May, um, very beginning of June, 
And then very end of September and October are pretty much the bulk of when we see visitation to the backcountry. It's just the prime weather for being out there. It's not too hot, um, not too cold. And the weather's usually pretty nice during those months. So that's when we see the vast majority of the people coming out. So here's a little bit of some views from the park. So this upper left-hand corner, uh, that is the Salt Creek drainage running down through the Needles District. So um, we're looking north and it's flowing um, or draining north up through the park into the Colorado River. And then down in the, the right hand corner there, that's the island in the Sky District, um, looking out over what we call the White Rim, um, which is a geologic layer in the district that has a four wheel drive road, which you can kind of see in sections there that traverses along that edge. Um, with different hiking opportunities. And then the two corners here on the lower left and upper right, uh, that's uh, scenes from the Great Gallery. So a really significant, um, unique rock art drawing, um, rock art um, resource here in the park. So what I wanted to kind of bring to attention and what I was referring to earlier that uh, has become a concern with with our backcountry rangers that are out on a on a daily basis patrolling these areas and, and protecting uh, doing permit compliance and various projects and work in the backcountry is just the fact that a lot of these uh, off trail routes are being represented on maps and mapping applications or mapping apps as what appear to our visitors to be official trails. So for instance, this box down in the, in the right, the lower right there, the red box, um, this is a, a trail run, or I'm sorry, a canyon, a side canyon of Lavender Canyon, which runs in the Needles District just off of Salt Creek. So Salt Creek runs, um, which I was talking about earlier, is over on the left-hand side. So <clears throat> Lavender Canyon itself, this is, what I have in the box here, that red line, that, that's not a trail. It's really <laughs> a very rugged and um, hard to find for some people off trail route that drops down off a rugged four wheel drive road into this remote canyon. Um, and then what people are doing is following it around and coming up another side canyon up onto a mesa top and then circling around and dropping down into Salt Creek which really is a unique opportunity and a, and a great adventure for people coming to the park. The problem is, is when our visitors see this on a um, mapping app, like you see here, they feel like they're getting into a, um, a trip or have an expectation that they're gonna be following a trail, which is, is very far from accurate. This is not a trail by any means, and it is very precarious getting down off of this canyon rim um, into the canyon itself, as well as when you climb up over on the other side um, and climb out of there. So these first two boxes, this one down in kind of the center lower area, and then the one right above it are what I want to talk about first. Um, and I just sh showed over here, you know, that it's marking it as a footway, um, which again, our visitors are mostly interpreting as, as a trail. So this is that <clears throat> section I was just talking about with this route that drops down into Lavender Canyon. And I borrowed these, these captures of video from Back Trail Adventures, which is um, a group that come, has come out here and done this loop. Um, and, the, and they put a video up about it online. But you can see here, this is down in the lower left. This is that route we're looking at. And it's going up this very precarious scree slope that is very difficult to do with a backpack on um, and is by far not a trail by any means. Um, and you definitely have to do some pretty good route finding and be prepared and be wanting to do that type of a trip. Um, you can see he labeled it in his video as extremely steep final climb. So he was actually climbing out of it um, with no trail. On the other side, just uh, climbing or the side canyon coming up out of Lavender Canyon on the other side, 
um, is kind of a similar situation. So it's a deep, steep, rugged canyon that has no trail in it really. Um, and it's very difficult to scramble out of there. In fact, there's many places where you have to actually, you know, use your hands. Um, and it's definitely raising on the level of ranking for what would be just normal hiking with just two feet. You definitely have to do some scrambling and climbing to get up out of here. But again, it looks like to a lot of our visitors when they see it on a map that it's an actual official park designated trail and they're looking at it thinking they're going to follow it like any other trail in the park that's been well maintained and um, leads them on the route they're looking to do. So the other concern here is that archaeological district I was talking about. So Salt Creek, there is a, an official park trail that runs through Salt Creek and you can see it here. This main trail running along the, the drainage here, that is an official park trail. We go out and we do official trail maintenance on it. We keep it reined in to a certain area. Um, and the reason why we do is this area has a ton of archeological resources. So you can see um, just a couple examples here um, up in the center here uh, are some rock structures up on a cliff wall along the Salt Creek drainage. Um, and these can be anywhere from, you know, depending on what um, age they are, they can be anywhere from, you know, 3,000 to 10,000 years old. Um, very sensitive to visitor impacts. And, um, and for that matter, it is illegal to actually enter, um, enter these sites. Um, so you can see down here on the right, we have some of our visitors who, um, are at one of these sites and are actually climbing around in these very sensitive old structures, which cannot withstand that type of um, visitation where people are climbing into them and scrambling all of them. Um, and as I mentioned, it is illegal and we do post this on our, our permits and whatnot. Um, so <clears throat> the problem here is what I've circled or put in the red box over in the map on the left um, is showing trails up to these sites. And again, these are not official park trails. Uh, and the fear for us is that if these are posted to every site within the Salt Creek drainage, we're gonna see more and more visitation to these areas that are not being maintained or stabilized or uh, monitored to protect them from visitation, such as what you're seeing down in the right-hand side here. Um, it, it's a very unique experience for people to hike through Salt Creek and find these things on their own. And we encourage people to do so, but we also encourage them to view them from a distance. What we don't encourage them to do is to establish an actual trail up to these sites um, and climb up into them. As you can see, this trail up here is doing for, for this ruin that's in the middle up here. So that's one of our greatest concerns is just having trails or what appears to be a trail to our visitor um, on these apps that they're getting marking routes over to sensitive archeological sites and just the proliferation of that occurring if it, does, if it goes unmonitored um, and isn't diligently um, you know, edited through, through different apps. I'll move on. This is just to kind of wrap up that discussion just now. Um, so this again is the same area. Um, this is the Salt Creek drainage running north here um, over to the, on the left, um, west side of the map. On the, on the right, on the east side is that route I was talking about down into Lavender Canyon. Um, and then it kind of exits the park and then takes that side canyon back up and into the park. And you can see here on a, a map I got off of Cal Topo, it actually continues. This is not a park route. Um, it actually continues around the Cedar Mesa, drops down off of a very precarious cliff ledge down into back into Salt Creek um, through several archaeological sites. Um, and this trail over here off of that is actually up to an archeological site. So um, the funny thing I find here is just that this trail that I just showed you or this route that I just showed you 
that looks like a trail, it looks more official as is as if it's more a, of an official trail than the actual official trail running through Salt Creek. So again, this trail running through Salt Creek itself, which is a sparse dotted line, that's an official park trail. We maintain it. We we send people out on it. We um, issue permits for people to do backpacking trips. We do trail work on it. Um, but the rest of this out here that you're seeing, these are not official park trails, but they look more official. So that's a big concern of ours. What I did put over here on the right was this same map, and I apologize, it's very poor quality, but same map of, of the area on Gaia. And it was encouraging that when we did go in and edit out that route, because it was bringing a lot of people to the area and creating um, some concerns with um, safety for visitors that didn't know what they were getting into. We did go in and edit it and it finally did disappear, at least off of the Gaia map that people were bringing to the park. So um, that is encouraging for us. Um, the rest of these, these routes on here that aren't park trails are still showing up. Um, but, you know, it was encouraging to see at least the most um, potentially dangerous for visitors did, did disappear off of there. Um, so just moving on, I wanted to provide one more example that was more related to resource protection in the park. So moving a little bit farther north into the kind of part of the Needles District of the park and looking at the main conglomeration of, of trails, uh, we're just seeing a huge increase in, um, in proliferation of social trails. And when we see social trails in the desert down here, I, you know, they don't go away. They last for, for, for pretty much ever. I mean, we can go out and try and cover them up and keep people from going walking on them. But once they're established, I mean, they're pretty much there. And if we don't keep them less visible to visitors, then people are just taking them as if they're actual trails. So a great example, and, and the reason being, and why it's important to us uh, is biological soil crust. So um, perhaps some of you are familiar with it, but it is a natural living um, variation of organisms that grow on the soil out here. Um, it's incredibly important to the area to help with erosion and to um, bring in soil and, and maintain moisture in the, in the soil for vegetation. Um, it's incredibly crucial uh, to the environment and to the ecosystems out here. Um, it's easily destroyed by people walking on it. Um, it's a huge problem when we see people getting off trail and, and walking through the, the soil crust. Um, especially when we see greater numbers of visitors coming, it's easily destroyed to the point where, um, you know, there's no recovery. And we tell our visitors, I mean, that's one of the main things we try to express to our visitors is please stay on trails and durable surfaces to avoid um, busting or destroying uh, the biological soil crust. So here's a good example of what I'm talking about. This is one of the trailheads in the Needles District in that area I just showed you in the previous map, a trailhead for some of the main trails um, on the left here. And then again, on the right, um, all of those little loops you're seeing there, those are not trails. Those are social trails that um, unfortunately visitors have created. And somehow now they're showing up on apps and maps as if they're trails, which only encourages people to seek them out and use them. A um, little bit better on the Cal Topo map, at least only one exists, which this is by no means any, we, we regularly try to block this trail off and keep people from using it for many reasons, um, but it is represented as if it is a trail. So what does that look like on the ground? Well, here's what it looks like. You can see here in kind of the middle of the picture running through the middle is the main trail um, off to the left. These are all of just the spider web of trails that are forming 
um, killing that biological soil crust, which then won't maintain moisture for the vegetation that's living up there. And before you know it, we just have a big, vast, uh, empty dirt field um, that people have, you know, destroyed by hiking on it. So that's a big concern for ours. Um, the final is just another example of this happening in the Chesler Park, Chesler Park region of the Needles. So that trail we were just looking at leads out to this Ches Chesler Park area. It's a big grassy desert um, parkland uh, with a non-official trail, just socially created trail running right through the middle of it uh, that people regularly get lost on. They try to follow it and thinking it's a, a you know, a park trail um, and they end up in this big grassland just walking all over soil crust and destroying it. Um, not quite sure where the actual trail is, which because they're trying to follow something that's not a trail, they, they can't find it. So that's a that's just another example of what we're seeing. Um, and then the one up on the right here uh, is similar. It's off of a backcountry campsite. Um, it's a trail that people have established from their campsite up to um, really nowhere. It just kind of goes up and dead ends, but it seems as though it's a, an official trail because it's represented on these, on these maps, um, on their apps. So again, the reason why I brought this up and brought it here today, and, and again, thank you so much for the opportunity to, to present our concerns here at Canyonlands, um, and, and not just Canyonlands, it resonates with arches and, and natural bridges and Hoven Leap as, as well. But uh, again, the reason why I brought it here today was just we wanted to have an opportunity to figure out how we can work with, uh, with these different mapping apps to you know, hopefully rein in some of this uh, um, showing up of these non-official trails that are just creating problems and to the extent that, you know, we can't keep on top of it. And unfortunately, the resource is suffering because of it. Um, and that's what we're here to do. We're, we're here to protect those resources. And then again, just for, you know, our duties to ensure that we're promoting visitor safety and helping with visitor safety. Uh, you know, this year we've seen what feels to be a lot of novice people coming out and, and wanting to hike and backpack in the park. And I can't tell you how many people I've turned away and it discouraged them from doing that route I just presented on earlier into Lavender Canyon because they were, their expectations were way out of line with the reality of what it is on the ground. So that's why I brought it here tonight. Just wanted to open it up. Um, you know, we obviously would like to, you know, go in and review all of these trails and data, but um, we have a lot going on and, and to think we're gonna keep up on it on a regular basis with everything else we do is, is kind of difficult. That's where I'll leave it. I'll open it up and uh, pass it back to, to you, Maggie.